But as a designer, I know making something so simple is actually hard. Yes, this was incredibly hard because we wanted to make it all one piece. That's why it doesn't tear, because you don't have seams. And then the zipper um, is very hard to get out of a mold. And so that took me over a year and millions of dollars to get that done. But this, if you look at the corner, there's no overlap in the corner, which is really great for pouring. It's also great for cleaning in the dishwasher. I have Monica cutting up some vegetables for us. Hi. Hi. So if you want to throw those in there, I'm going to show you how to steam in a zip top. Just throw a little bit of water in and then zip it almost all the way shut, leave an inch open. Oh, that looks easy. It's very easy and great for meal prep. Then you start the microwave for four awesome. minutes. All right, Steve, why don't you grab some soup? Sure. Oh, this is super hot. This is sturdy. You don't even have to hold on to it. Just it stands up and stays open for you. Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> and then you can turn around and pour that back in and you can test this pour spout. Oh, okay. Oh, look how easy it pours. Very easy to control. Fantastic. Cool little touch, stays open, zip shut, so easy. Okay guys, we're gonna take it to the next level. Next level? Yes, Steve, Go can you for get it. the fruit out of sure. the freezer? And Monica, you're going to blend it for us. You can blend right in it? Absolutely. Get out of here. It's not gonna cut it? It won't cut it, go ahead. I can't believe this isn't tearing it to shreds. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that, beautiful. Nice pour. Cheers. Cheers to Zip Top. What a great innovation. Thank you. So this is how it arrives. And so right away, the design experience begins, I see. So you already have instructions, it looks like. Receiving it and getting it out of the box, we want to make sure it was really simple all the way to the end point of once you're using it. So what is all this? Yeah, so this is what comes in the pit. Um, this is actually a cover to oh. use if it's raining or you have this in storage to make sure it's protected when you're not using the fire pit. Mm -hmm. And then this is the wood pack that Andrew just told you about that has the pellets in it. And the cone, so how does it work? Well, I'll show you. So you're just lighting the pack, just the corners? Yep. The best part is you know, like, you know it's going to work every time. As soon as you oh. have this lit, and it's supposed to last for 30 minutes? Yeah, I can come out at the end of a work day and have a 30 minute fire and just kind of unwind and relax without having to go through all the hassle of, of logs and, and kindling, splitting wood, finding wood if you don't have it. So as the pack burns away, the pellets are starting to fall out. The cone that we put the pack on, um, that's helping distribute the pellets so that you know the, the fire goes all around the inside oh, of this, this okay. engine. These houses are primarily made of plastic, um, petroleum-based products, and it didn't used to be that way. Before World War II, houses were made of natural materials, mostly wood, stone, but pretty much everything you see here on the exterior of the home is plastic. From a health perspective, these plastic products um, contain toxins that can be released into the homes of those that live in them, and it, it, it can make people sick. Yeah. It's almost like, and I don't mean this negatively, but it's almost like every house is kind of lying a little bit. <laughs> it is. You know, I'm made of wood, but in fact, it's petroleum. That's right. This is kind of the deconstruction of a conventional, you know, current convention of building. When you look at this, from the outside, it looks like wood, but it looks like it's plastic. Your vinyl siding that also kind of looks like wood. Well, there we go, it's plastic again. Here's some OSB board, which is used as sheathing, filled with adhesives, mm -hmm. plastic. Conventional studs sometimes have flame retardants in them. This is a newel post top. You know, used to be carved wood, now plastic. Plastic. We have paint Yep. with pretty color. So yellow. Wouldn't be great to have a kitchen in yeah. yellow, made of plastic. And plastic. And then we have, you know, plumbing. Yeah, sure. Plastic, vinyl. Yes, yes. Even a towel rack these days, plastic. Yeah. This is a real favorite lately, luxury vinyl tile or luxury tile, plastic, plastic. not wood at all. And this is a brick made from hemp and lime and water. And it goes into being this great building material. Wow, look That's at that. That's a great insulation and it's mold resistant. It moderates the humidity in a home and actually it's a great acoustical insulation. So the home doesn't feel tinny, it doesn't feel hollow. It feels kind of soft and quiet. Hey Sean, how's it going? 
Harry, how are you? Super excited for you to get your sweat profile. I think uh, the next step is for you to, to get hydrated. So um, if you open up the lid, you've got piercer right here, basically where your, your pod is gonna go into, uh, and then it's gonna make Gatorade like you just find in your store. I imagine now based on your sweat profile, there are a range of pods and you kind of custom tailor and choose a pod based on what you've seen in your sweat profile. Correct. It also uh, depends on the intensity of workout, mm -hmm. uh, your how how heavy of a sweater, the volume that you sweat out, um, as well as how much fuel, how intensity your exercise is going to be. Another interesting feature of this is the, the highly personalized um, nature of these ID rings. We have the ability to actually make a lot of different designs on the on the bottle cap here and you can mix and match and have a lot of flexibility and personalization there as well there's a really great story um, that we just did to kind of use the findings and the capabilities that we unlocked with gx and actually co-created a bottle with serena williams you can see on the on the back side of this tpe there's the word strong she is a strong yeah. athlete strong woman and this is really coming through in the bottle that she uh she co-created with the gatorade team I really love how sustainable this product is. The stats are just amazing. 60% less plastic use, 40% uh, less greenhouse gas emissions, 80% less space needed in transportation, and 90% less usage of water and energy in production compared to ready-to-drink bottles. The GX sweat patch and platform is bringing elite level sports science to everyone. I'm so inspired that with my new training buddy, Xavi, we're gonna catch another workout. Ready? Let's do it. Let's go. How in the world do we redesign adolescent sexual health care? Well, it might come as a surprise. We worked with young people. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> um, we recruited young people from Chicago South Side to work with us over the summer. They did their own design research. They went into a mobile health unit, really tried to understand what was and wasn't working in a clinical experience. They took, they analyzed their data and they came up with a range of concepts to really speak to the kinds of care that they want. So not like that. <laughs> no, uh, we need to get beyond words. So young people did their own research, right? So they went into the field and they tried to understand what was working and not working. One of the teams um, noticed they were introduced to a method during their counseling experience and they were like, what is this? So when they were analyzing their data, they wanted to understand like, what are all the methods? What do they do? How do they work? And why aren't we seeing them? And so they really wanted to understand this and so, they had a chance to generate a bunch of ideas and in their workshop they built a tool because they wanted to have young people have the experience of understanding what the stuff was because they were just like so inspired and they wanted everybody to know. And they wanted to see them without hierarchy. They wanted to know what they look like, what they feel like, their size, and how they work. This isn't the final prototype, <laughs> is it? No, it's not. We went from here to here. And so we worked with all sorts of designers, industrial designers, brand designers, service designers, to really understand how this tool needed to work. And so, for instance, we thought about the overall form factor. How do we display all of the methods? And we paid a lot of attention to the look and feel. So for instance, with the implant, it's made to feel like how the implant would feel under your skin. How big is an IUD? Oh my gosh, it's so small and it's so flexible. Now I understand how that works. This tool is busting myths because people don't know how small an IUD is or how flexible it is. So a lot of thought was really given to making sure that this um, really helps young people understand how methods work. Amanda, how do healthcare providers feel about this? Healthcare providers actually helped us design this. And so it needs to fit into their lives and into their pockets. Additionally, it can also hang on a hook in their office. So we know that if it doesn't work this way, then it's not gonna make it into clinic. Angel, tell me about your role on the design team. Well, Debbie, I actually help them test out their products while also giving them intensive feedback so that they can know how people like me who are adolescents know what we want, but also help healthcare professionals know how to use it in a real setting. Who would your ideal healthcare practitioner be like? Well, I would have to say it's a mix between Michelle Obama, Beyonce, and one of my favorite authors, Sharon Draper. Who would have thought there were this many options for birth control when I was in seventh grade science class? All Mr. Margiata taught us was about birds 
and bees. <laughs> Angel, did you find this helpful? Actually, I thought it was extremely helpful to know I had so many options to choose from in case I don't like one, I can always use something else instead. Dr. Gilliam, is this a game changer? You know it is. I actually would not go to clinic without this tool. Did Dr. Gilliam meet your expectations of the ideal doctor? Most definitely, of course, you know. She has that mix of Beyonce, you know, inspirational, a powerhouse, she holds her ground. You know, she has that Michelle Obama little razzle-dazzle to it. She helps with youth and teens, and you know she's an advocate for them. But also, like my favorite author, Sharon Draper, she knows a lot about her youth, and also when it comes to trauma or anything that they're going through, she'll be easy to talk to. I think she rocks. Most definitely, you know. Hello Options is a forward-thinking design that reflects the vision of creative young people. It will revolutionize the birth control counseling experience for everybody. So what's key? Location, where is that event? What is the issue? What's happening? Do we need to uh, send certain type of support? And so through Smart Transcription, we're gonna emphasize key information. So location, this is key. So I know that this is where the location is and I need to get somebody out there to respond. Another word, injuries, this is critical. This is gonna tell us that we need to get an ambulance there as soon as possible. Because every second counts. Yes, but some other value that we found for smart transcription is when you look at a call center and you think about the, the supervisor, at a glance, they're able to look at the transcript and they're able to really just even key in on the highlights. If this was lit up with a lot of red words, a lot of yellow words, at a glance, they're able to understand that that call taker may need some additional support and smart transcription in real time that's able to deliver these insights. What Motorola Solutions is doing here is improving critical communication. Improving process improves output, which helps the people who help us in moments that matter.